the last couple of times when we've been up here trying to uh, deliver what God has gave us, we, we wanted to flow with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit moved just a, a little bit a little bit different. And so I couldn't I couldn't get to this, and I may not get very far again this morning. But we tried to take off on the subject of judging and being judged, and you know that's the thing that we all do every day of our life. We we we're either judging or standing in judgment seat of some sort, sometime. And um, I I think it's very important for us to to you know know some of the scripture that God says on the subject. And I think it, once we get these in our heart, get them in our spirit, I think we'll be a little bit more, less likely to judge and criticize other people around us so much. Uh, now, do you know of anybody here in the building today that really needs this? Don't, don't, not you, but do will you agree there's probably some, some of us that need it in here? You know, Francis needs it, I'm sure. And, and, uh, yeah, but not, you know, not me, but you know, no, y'all, y'all know I'm cutting up, don't you? Well, some of y'all, at least you know your wife or your husband needs it, don't you? Somebody nod your head at me a little bit, and I, I'm getting some of you in trouble, don't you? Uh, and I, I'm just cutting up with you, but you know the scripture let us know, and uh, the first one that I started with in Luke six, he says, "As you would that men would do to you, so do you also unto them." And you know that's pretty, that's pretty simple, and he says. If you love them which love you, what think of you? Because, you know, sinners also do the same thing. And he said, and he talked about being kind. He talked about, uh, you know, even loving your enemy. But he even talked about uh, being merciful. And, you know, many, many times we, we, we don't even think about loving somebody that, that we think is unlovable. You know, has anybody ever been at a time in their life when they've been unlovable and you knew you were unlovable and you wondered how God could love you? You know, yeah, we all, we all have some time. We, you know, we've gone through something, we go, man, or maybe we was a, you know, over something and, and we knew good and well we didn't have the right spirit or the right attitude. And we had to say, you know, God help us, God forgive us. And, 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 he, and he said, but love your enemies and do good to, to them and even lend them stuff and don't even expect anything back. And he said, then your reward, you know, your reward uh, shall be great and you'll be children of the highest because it says, listen, listen to what it said, that he is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Isn't it? Again, how many of us can look back and understand that even while we were without, away from God, and know that really in the, in the natural, in our heart, we knew we didn't deserve anything from God, but He's good to us anyway. Isn't that awesome? He was kind to us. We could still feel, we could still feel His presence. We could still feel His, his hand on us. And man, thank, thank the Lord for that. Because I, I, I will say that I, I'd want to be like Psalmist David concerning that. Lord, and I pray this for, Lord, please don't ever take your Holy Spirit away from me. You know, I, I don't want to ever live where I can't feel the hand of the Holy Spirit on me. How about you? And actually, there's another thing that I pray. When I leave the gate, I wake up in the morning and uh, I begin in the way that I do. I, I begin to give Him thanks and praise for uh, things, different things, but for Him being, uh, you know, my God, my Lord, my Savior, and, and being my, uh, you know, the one that has brought me through everything he's brought me through and maybe I don't name everything all the time but when I'm praising him and whether I be inside or outside on the in the yard well then when I when I start out the gate I'll say Lord don't even let me get out this gate and get down this road unless you go with me you know and I know he's with me but because he promised he'd never leave us nor forsake us but I'm kind of like Moses on that I don't want to leave you know I don't want to leave this place unless the Lord goes with me and, and that's, that's really how I feel. And I ask Him for that. And, and I thank Him for that. So uh, I, I praise Him. And then, you know, we use that Luke 6 and 38, Given it shall be given unto you, good measure, press down, shake together, run it over, shall be given unto your bosom. What measure you meet with, shall be measured unto you again. And we use that a lot of time even for finances. And look, it is for that as well. But it's also about mercy. Come on. It's about not judging. Come on, it's about, because it just, it's right here all tied in with it. He said, when you give, then you'll get it. You know, and, and there's another one that says there, and he says it, judge not 
lest you, and, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Then he said, forgive, and you shall be forgiven. How many of you know it's very important for us, if we expect forgiveness from the Heavenly Father, then we need to forgive one another. I'm going to say it again. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. But if you forgive not, you know what Jesus said in another text? He said, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you if you don't forgive others. Amen. Keep on judging them if you want to. You better leave that up to God. But you know what? You don't know what they did. They did this. They did this to me. They acted this way. They said this. They said, the Lord said, you give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake together, run it over, shall men give unto your bosom. What measure you meet with will shall be measured unto you again. If you're a person going around kind to people and good to people and loving people and forgiving people and not judging them and not condemning them, then God's going to give it to you. Good measure, press down, shake together, and run it over. Isn't that awesome? But if you're one of those judgmental people going around, and I'm not saying you are. In fact, I don't, I don't know any of you are. I knew a few a long time ago that were a whole lot, but Thank the Lord, you know, I've seen some changes. How many of y'all understand that new song? What a wonderful change in my heart has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Hey, He can do it if we want Him to change us. Amen? But, you know, I, and, and I'm not doing this because I think that you need it, but how many of you know we all need, David Allen even needs the Word of God? Because it's real easy to fall in a seat of judgment if we don't watch out. And, and the Word of God is real clear. You know, in last week, I mentioned, or whenever it was, I mentioned he that, I thought this was a neat scripture in Proverbs, he that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him. Isn't this amazing? He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him. How many of y'all know, it's kind of like a, a funny way to say it, if you stick your nose in somebody else's business, then it ain't your business. Have you ever known people that are always sticking their nose? In your business? Well, let's not say not yours. You ever known anybody who's been sticking their nose in other people's business all the time? Then they come try to tell you the business that they stuck their nose into? Well, you know what God said it's like? It's like one that taketh a dog by, that taketh a dog by the ears. And you say, oh, that's not in the Bible. Well, it certainly is in my Bible in Proverbs 26, 17. And I, I like this and I always have. How many of y'all ever had a wood fire before? Outside? How many of y'all ever had a bonfire? How many of y'all ever had a fireplace inside? Well, I'm going to tell you something real profound that some of y'all may not know. Where no wood is, the fire goeth out. If you'll quit throwing wood on the fire, the fire will die. Boy, ain't that a revelation? But that's what God said. This is Proverbs 26 and 23, 22. Where there's no wood, the fire goeth out. Now listen to it. And in the same verse. So where there's no tail bear, y'all want to know what, what the outcome is where there's no tail bear? It's kind of like where there's no wood, the fire goes out. Where there's no tail bear, the strife ceases. The strife will stop. Isn't God smart? And somebody said, oh, but what I'm telling is the truth. I'm not telling the tale. I'm telling the truth. Well, I'm glad you thought that because the Holy Spirit told me to write this down this morning here somewhere. Proverbs, I'm, I could quote it, but I just, and that's not a brag, but I just want you to know it's in the Bible. Proverbs 11 and 13 says, a tale bearer. You don't know what a tale bearer does? A tale bearer revealeth secrets. How many of y'all know secrets are true and real? See, somebody says, well, I'm not a tale bearer because I'm not telling the tale because I'm telling the truth. This is something that really happened. They really did it. And I'm telling, I'm going to judge. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to condemn them. I'm not going to give them forgiveness. But I'm going to tell you what they did. I'm going to tell you what they did here. I'm going to tell you what they did there. I'm going to tell you what they did two years ago. I'm going to tell you what they did five years ago. I'm going to tell you what they did to me. I'm going to tell you what they did to my family. Well, guess what, honey? Whether you like it or not, you are acting and serving as a tale bearer. You're telling the tale. God didn't say a tale was a lie. 
We think, don't tell that tale, because see, we tell our little kids, don't tell the tale. And we think a tale is something false that's just made up. Uh uh. A tale bearer. <laughs> Y'all want me to preach on the other side for a while? A tale bearer revealeth secrets. Listen to the rest of it. But he that is of a faithful spirit. How many of y'all want to be a faithful spirit? He that is of a faithful spirit, you know what he said? Concealeth the matter. That means he don't talk it, he don't tell it. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you something. You don't even need to tell your wife or your husband everything that you know that you get exposed to. I don't want Francis sometime poisoned with some old thoughts. And she, t she knows things that I don't know. You know why? Because we don't want to be a talebearer. A talebearer will reveal its secrets, but a person that's a faithful spirit will conceal the matter. How many of y'all know? Oh, seriously, I, and I've asked this hundreds of times when, when I'm halfway on the subject. How many of y'all had somebody to tell you something about somebody that you really wish they had never told you? Because it's somebody you might have liked, somebody you're trying to get acquainted with, and somebody you still like. But now when you see them underneath your breath, and the devil will tell you, you know what they did. You know what so-and-so said that they did? And I will tell you, Frances has always kind of said this when she's teaching on the subject sometime. A lot of time, even on Wednesday night here a while back, she just said it. Next time somebody starts wanting to run somebody else down and tell you something, say, oh, 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 hold on a minute. Let's go get them and you tell me in front of them, in front of their face. Guess what? That will shut a tail bearer up. That will stop them in their tracks. Come on. And it don't mean, please know, please know, it don't mean that you can't tell something good about somebody. But see, the Bible says when we talk or words that come out ought to be, that's what Ephesians says, ought to be edifying and uplifting to the hearer. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. And if it's not, we ought not be repeating it or be telling it. Amen? A talebearer will reveal secrets, but he that's of a faithful, or that means she too, so you ladies are not getting off on this lightly. Just because it said he don't mean it don't mean you can't put an S in front of that he. Because it just means, it means everybody. How many of you know the Word of God is not just for males and not for females, and neither is it for just females because they're that way, and the men ain't. Well, that's a, that's a lie right there because we know better than that, don't we? So, but, but listen to this. So, where there's no wood, the fire goes out, and where there's no tail bear, the strife ceases. How many of you know sometimes when you hear something, it'll stir up strife? It, it'll stir up anger. It'll make somebody mad. It'll hurt somebody. And he says, and as coals are to burning coals, so is wood to the fire, and so is a contentious man to kindle strife. Somebody is contentious all the time. The words of her tail there are his wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. And listen to what the Lord said in Leviticus 19.6. Thou shalt not go up and down, talking about moving around, living in this life as a tail bearer among the people. That's what God said. Over there in the thou shall not, he said, thou shall not go up, move around. Thou shalt, what he's saying, tail bearers ought not be moving around among thy people. Neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor, because he said, for I am the Lord. That's in the beginning. See, he's the one that has the right to judge or to condemn somebody or to cause somebody to rise or fall. And, and God don't need any help out of us going around being a tail bearer among the people. Somebody said, well, now, Brother Allen, you think a bunch of people are tail bearing in this church? I don't think so. But if they are, I would sure appreciate it if they would listen to God's Word and heed God's Word and stop it. And how many of you know if you really mean business with God, you can ask Him. Some of you might have diarrhea of the tongue or diarrhea of the mouth. You can pray and ask God because He's our healer and He can heal you of that. How many of y'all understand what I'm talking about? Have you ever been around people that go, the tongue is, it's, I know it's real wet inside our mouth and the tongue slips real easy because it's wet in there and it slips out real easy. And that's how words are. Come on. How many of y'all know? Have, have, have y'all ever, ever really seriously before said, you know, Lord, I wish I didn't talk as much as I talk. Okay, forget it. None of you respond on that. Have you ever been around anybody that you wish that the Lord would fix it so they didn't talk as much? Come on, other people. You know, ah, oh, no. Mm -hmm. Got some hands raised in. 
But not me, O oh Lord, not me standing in need of prayer, but Lord, my sister. It's my sister and it's my brother that has need, not me. The song really goes, it's not, you know, not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Because it's easy to let something slip out that we shouldn't, that we ought to hold it in confidence or hold it in prayer. And I just made that one up. It's part of a song, but I just added to it. But, you know, it's, 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 really, it's really funny. It, that, and that's what the Lord said. It said you shouldn't go about as, among the people as a talebearer. And it says that a lot of people in 1 Timothy, they, they learn to be idle. And it says they wander about from house to house. And it said not only idle, guess what? If you have too much idle time on your house, I mean on your hands, how many of y'all know, have, have, y'all heard the, have y'all heard the old saying that grandpas and grandmas used to say all the time that, uh, what is it, how'd they say it? Roger, you remember, I know you've been around some of them old. A lot of you have an idol, uh, it's a devil's workshop. How'd they say it? Idle hands is a devil's workshop. You know, how, how many of y'all, and, 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 it, and, it, and it, says, it says these people learn to be idle and they wander about from house to house. It said not only idle, but, listen to this, tattlers also busybodies speaking things which they ought not. How many of y'all, uh, come on, help me right now this morning just a minute. How many of y'all ever had the Holy Spirit to tell you even, I, you know, I say this a lot of times, but even down to a little old bitty lie, a little bitty lie. Not a big lie, but a little bitty lie. And the Holy Spirit was right there saying, don't tell the lie, tell the truth. Come on. Now, how many of y'all ever wanted to tattle something and the Holy Spirit said, don't tell that to them because they don't need to know it. See, now we all, the Holy Spirit is always there if we want to be in tune with Him, if we listen to Him, if we'll be soft toward the Holy Spirit, not to be opening our mouth and saying the things we ought not say. You know, there's plenty of things we can talk about besides telling on somebody else or telling what they've done or telling, come on, bearing a tail, come on, or t- talking about how bad they are, or what they did, what, what they're doing, who they're seeing, who we saw the car at, where we saw their truck at, where we saw them at the wherever. Come on now, come on. You know, the Lord told uh, the disciples in one place, and this was Luke 17 and 1 through 4. Go ahead and put, yeah, 17, 1 through 4. Then he said to the disciples, it is impossible but that offenses will come. How many of y'all know things are going to happen? Offenses are going to take place. But it's what we do with those offenses that matters. It says offenses will come. But woe be unto him by, by whom they come. It'd be better for him that a millstone were hanging about his neck and cast in the sea that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, says rebuke him. And if he repent, then it says forgive him. You know, there's some more scripture that says when you come to offer your gift at the altar, when you come, and that can be standing, that can be at home, that can be here. That when you begin to offer God praise, an offering of sacrifice of praise or whatever to the Lord, and you remember your brother's got all against you or you got all against your brother, you know what the Lord said do? He said, leave your gift at the altar and go and make that right. And if your brother, so if he uh, offended you, well then it says that you go to him and you rebuke him, you tell him what he did, and if he repent, then forgive him. And if he trespass against thee even seven times in a day, and then seven, seven times in a day, turn again and say unto thee, I repent. If he says, I'm sorry again, I repent. I shouldn't have said that. I did this, did that. It says, thou shalt forgive him. Well, the, you think he ought to get it right first time, even if he comes back and repents again, even if it's seven times. And one day, the Lord said, if he turns and repents, he says, forgive him. See, that's what God wants us to do. Give people mercy. Give people 
love. Give people. Uh, some of the old times you say, give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, let, let, let me let me just say that if it was not for uh, if it was not for God and His mercy and His grace toward us, you know, most of us, I will say David Allen would be in deep trouble then, whether you would be or not. But I'm glad that God is a merciful God and God is a forgiving God. And, and, and the Word does tell us that even as Christ has forgiven us, so we ought to forgive one another. But uh, uh, I... I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. I, I wanted to read you something out of the expositors talking about the, the things that we say and that we speak about other people. And maybe, maybe I'll do it at another time. An awesome, awesome Bible here explaining, uh, giving an expositor uh, study on, on the Word of God and giving, giving something to help it be clear where you can understand it even better. But, you know, I, I, I don't... I don't I want you, if you would, just bow, bow your heads with me just a moment, and we're, we're going to close. If, if there's something that, and, and I feel like the Lord did such a mighty work a while ago, we could have left right then and just, just left, just left early, and that would have been fine, and maybe that's, maybe that's what I should have done. I don't know. I don't always hit everything just right. I know some, some people would, but some people don't, and I'm still, I'm still trying to flow with the Spirit. After 50 years, and 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 uh, so maybe I miss it, but I really can't help but believe that the Holy Spirit has nailed something with two or three people here. I'm not going to ask for a raise of hands. I'm not going to embarrass you. I don't want nobody to know it's you. It's none of their business. But if it's somebody that you need to say, God. I forgive them. I don't care if it's a marriage. I don't care if it's a family situation. I don't care if it's on a job somewhere. I don't care if it's related to a business. I don't care if it's related to a neighbor. But if you're really wanting God to move and work in your heart and your life and give you a freedom and liberty that you've never experienced before, I want you to tell God about it right now. You don't have to tell me. You don't even have to speak it out loud where somebody sitting beside you would hear it. But only you and God know. And I want you to say, Lord, I give that person to you now. And Lord, by your help, by your grace, and by your mercy, I forgive them. And help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, in this situation. Help me. Help me, Lord. In the natural, I can't do it. You know, it's hard to forgive people sometimes. And in our own power, we can't do it. But God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, because of what Jesus Christ did upon the cross of Calvary, I want you to know because of what He bought and paid for, God can give you a freedom and a liberty here. He can give you grace to forgive. He can give you grace to quit judging them. He can give you grace to let it alone. Just drop it. Leave it. And if you'll give, that scripture we started out with, Luke 6 and 38, if we'll give that forgiveness, give that mercy, give that grace to those individuals, then God said it'd be good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall God give back to us. And, 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 and I, I, I don't know about you, I want His goodness, His mercy, His grace in my heart and my life working and operating. So, Lord, we just give you right now these things that, are, that have been maybe bothering us, have been bugging us, that may have been weighting us down, that's been hindering us. Lord, right now we ask you to help us, Lord, as the Holy Spirit puts a finger on certain things in our life. Lord, we, it's been a little easy sometimes to tell somebody something that somebody else said that, that really on the inside we knew we shouldn't be telling it. We knew we ought to leave it alone. We knew it's your business and their business and not our business. And it certainly don't need to be somebody else's business that didn't even know it. So, Lord, help us like the psalmist David said today. Set a watch over our tongue. Set a watch over our mouth. So we won't say things that we should not say. So we won't be a talebearer. So we won't be a tattler. So we won't speak things that we ought not. Lord, help us, Lord, to have a clean, a clean tongue, a clean mouth in your sight, O oh Lord God. And help us, Lord, to give to other people 
the things that we want to receive and that we, we are blessed with because of what you've done for us. And Lord, give other people the benefit of the doubt and be kind to them and be good to them. And Lord, help us to conceal things and not reveal things. Help us to be of a faithful spirit. And Lord, let your power of your Holy Spirit rest on hearts and lives and help hearts and lives, we pray here today. And if someone's here and they're not saved, they're out of fellowship with God, but they want to get back in fellowship with you, Lord God, let them respond to the Spirit of the Lord and invite you into their heart and life, confess you as their Lord and Savior. They don't have to do it in front of everybody. They can just believe in their heart right now that you died for them and you rose from the dead and ask them, you to come into their heart and life and be Lord of their life. And Lord, we just know you'll hear every voice that will call on you right now. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray and also ask that you go with every person here. Keep them safe from all harm and evil. Be with them and bless what they put their hands to, Lord, throughout this next week. Give them rest for this day and tonight, Lord, as they lay down and in the safety of their homes. Lord, bless and keep them, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. And let me just say, if anybody wanted to pray or be someone share with you just a little bit up front around this altar or, or be in agreement of prayer with you, please come forward. If not, God bless you. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. We appreciate you being here today. And we thank the Lord for Him showing up. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.